Good morning, caregivers. I'm Carol Howell, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Let's Talk Dementia Live on Facebook. I feel like I need to address, adjust my clothes. They look funny. <laughs> I hope you had a good night's sleep, and I'm glad that you've taken some time to join me today. Whether you're watching me live or in repeat or on YouTube, I thank you for being there. I'd like to thank our sponsors who help finance our ministry. Um, HD Imports located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. They are the mechanic that you want for your Honda, Hyundai, Acura, Kia, and Toyota. You can reach them at 803-985-0985. And if you're within an hour of them, you really ought to just make the drive because they're worth it. And also, Life in the Carolinas, the award-winning television show. You can find them at lifeinthecarolinas.com and on YouTube. And they are known for saying, Life in the Carolinas, where there's never a bad day for a good story. Isn't that the truth? Just perks up your day. And Beth Crosby, Editor Beth, and you can find her at EditorBeth.com. If you are writing something, if you're producing something, she needs to lay her eyeballs on it and make sure you've got top quality going on in your world. So I thank these folks for sponsoring our show. I wanted to start today to tell you about a little conversation I had last night with someone that's important to me. And um, they were discussing feeling down and um, just not having a lot of good in their life, so they thought. Hmm. You know, I just don't know. I don't know what you're going going through in your world. If you're dementia caregiving, I, I do have an understanding of that as I've gone through that entire journey. And my sweet mama went to heaven on May 31st, having gone through every stage of that disease. Hmm. That kind of hurt to say there for a second. But I know what that feels like, and it hurts. It, it, it was very difficult. And I know what it's like to deal with um, tragic news from other family members. My husband has a closed head injury that he sustained in the 90s that changed his life and my life and our daughter's life forever and eternity. I know what that's like. But I don't know what you're going through. But I know that there are days that it just... Well, in my saying, it sucks like a high-powered Hoover. <laughs> That's pretty graphic, isn't it? But you know what I mean. But I don't care what's going on in your world. There are things for which you need to be thankful. Studies have shown that if you make a list of 10 things that you're thankful for every day, that it's more effective for the human brain than Prozac. Hmm. Now, what are the side effects of that? None except you're going to use a little bit of pen and paper, and I'm thinking you can afford it. So I said to this important person to me yesterday, I want you to every day just write down three things you're thankful for. I didn't ask for ten. I knew she wasn't going to do ten. Well, actually, I did ask for ten at first, and she wrote back and told me she couldn't do ten. So then I asked her for three. I said, give me three things every day that you're thankful for, and she wasn't sure she could do it. And I said, no, you can. Ready? You've got three minutes. Ready, set, go. Three things you're thankful for. And real quickly, she wrote me back. I was very proud that she did that. You know, if you're living in the depths of depression, or maybe you have some kind of imbalance going on, um, bipolar or um, schizophrenic or just caregiving, or maybe just dealing with life, sometimes you think, there's nothing to be thankful for, but honey, you're wrong. And one of them is you're still alive. You're still breathing. You're sucking wind. You should be thankful for that. So I'm going to tell you something that I'm thankful for that happened last night. As you know, the mister in the house, Mr. Howell, is um, driving um, his brother and our vehicle to Florida to continue or to finish up that move. And so I've been by myself for a couple days, and I don't spend too much time by myself. And this house is new for us, but got ready to go to bed. And because he's not here, I was turning the air conditioner down really low. You know, this menopausal woman sweats at night. And when I looked at the thermostat, it was dead. I'm like, oh, no. But I got to look, and there was this teeny little print. Once I put these readers on and adjusted them just right, that said battery. So I found the battery in it. And guess what I'm thankful for? I had the batteries we needed two triple a's they were right there in the battery drawer oh i was thankful for that now two triple a batteries you wouldn't think would change your world would you but when it is going in your thermostat and your thermostat tells your air conditioner when to cut on and you live in florida it's hot well if you live in south carolina right now folks it's hot 
So I was very thankful for two little AAA batteries. I was really very thankful. I figured out how to get that contraption back in the thermostat and got it to working and the air came on. In your life, I want you to stop and think about what you're thankful for. There's things there, y'all, and write them down because it's fun to go back later and read them. But today I wanted to tell you about three things that I've learned lately. And the first thing that I have learned is that elastic pants are the best. <laughs> you know this, if you, if you had too much pizza, you know how glad you are to go home and take off your dress clothes and put on your elastic pants. Do I hear an amen there? I know who some of y'all are. You are glad for elastic pants. Me too. <laughs> but I'm talking specifically about elastic pants in your folks with dementia, especially if they're in the mid to late stages of dementia where they're having problems with bowel and bladder. Um, the brain does not communicate with the bladder and the bowels in such a way that that our folks with dementia get the signals in time to be able to go, oh, I need to go to the bathroom, get to the bathroom, and get on the potty. That doesn't always happen. In fact, it gets to the point it does not happen at all. I discovered this a few years, um, I'd say about two and a half years before Mama passed, and we were on a little vacation, and we'd gotten up early that morning, and we flew to see our daughter, in, my daughter in Florida, her granddaughter, and by the time we got to my daughter's house, it had been probably five hours, four hours since Mama had pottied. And boy, as soon as the door opened on the front front door of my daughter's house, we're like, hello, move, got to go, ran to the bathroom. But then Mama had on blue jeans. Oh, my word. By the time we got them unsnapped, unzipped, pulled down, all that stuff, she sort of didn't need to go anymore. Oh. That was when I thought, today we're going shopping, which always made my mama happy. She loved to go shopping, and we bought elastic waist pants. It made her life easier. She didn't have it to deal with. I didn't have it to deal with when I was helping her. Elastic pants can be your friend. Now, are they fr your friend in a man? Betcha. Yes, they are. It's called sweatpants. They're sweatpants. There are companies, if you will Google clothes for dementia or clothes for Parkinson's, you will find men's nice looking chino style pants that are elastic waist. There's a lot of stuff out there. So that's my first thing. The second thing I learned is not every bathroom is handicapped equipped. And that truth, I bet yours isn't. Well, maybe if you've redone it for your loved one, but most bathrooms are not handicapped equipped. Why do we not put grab bars in every bathroom. We put toilet tissue holders. We put paper towel holders, or not paper towel holders, what you call it, towel bars, that's it. I should know, I just bought two to replace yesterday. But we don't put grab bars. Why? I don't understand that. But if you're working with someone with dementia and you stop and go to the bathroom, you know, there's probably not a grab bar there. Or you go to visit Aunt Susie and she's not expecting to have somebody that needs some help. And you go to the bathroom and you get your loved one on the potty. And now you got to get them off the potty and there's not a grab bar. That's a problem. I discovered that with mama on that same vacation. Needed grab bars. Something to think about. You can buy suction grab bars at Walmart or you can order them that you can suction like to your shower wall. I have them in my shower. I have two in my shower. My daughter calls it my old people's shower. She said, mama, how many more grab bars are you going to put? To which I said, as many as I want, because I want to feel safe. So check that out. <clears throat> and the third thing I discovered, and also on that same trip, all those things came from that, all these three things came from that trip with Mama, is how seriously sundowning sucks. Again, like a high-powered Hoover, sundowning is just the worst. And that trip was my first experience with sundowning with Mama. Um it got really bad and that was the very first time she looked at me and said who are you and that was the very first time that my belly hit the floor oh it hurt and then the next day she remembered nothing about it sundowning stinks but when we realize this is what's going on and, and we prepare in our hearts and minds that this is going to happen and there's really not a lot we're going to do to stop it 
then it makes dealing with it a little bit easier. There are things you can do to make it easier. One is to keep lights on as much as possible. I can tell you my mama could sleep with every light in the room on, and that's not a bad idea at all if your loved one can rest like that. Um, that light does help fight sundowning. And especially from about two, three in the afternoon, make sure there's a lot of light in their room everywhere they are. I bought a floor lamp that comes across like that, you know, has the head that comes across like that, made by Ott, O-T-T, Ott Lamp, Ott Light. I think it's Ott Light. Um, I bought it for Mama because they're made specifically for crafting. Um, the light they put out on crocheting or sewing or whatever you're doing, yeah, it's the right kind of light. You know, so I had it coming over Mama's head for when she's crocheting. But then we get began to realize it was shining right on Mama's head and that's where I had her sit in the afternoons when sundowning was going to start because that light helped her a whole lot. So think about that. Have snacks ready for sundowning. That helps, takes their mind off of things. Sundowning is just the pits. It is just the pits. Well, those were the few things that I had on my mind today. I've already been up. I've walked 4,900 and... I can't read the rest of that because my watch is scratched, but almost 5,000 steps, so I'm proud of that. Going to Bible study here in a little bit because I'm gonna go do something for Carol. Gonna go do something to help me, to build me up so that I can do the things that God's called me to do today. You know, I kind of miss my caregiving, my direct caregiving with my mama. That ain't the truth. I do miss my, correct, my direct caregiving with my mama. But I'm going to go see what the Lord's got in store for me today. Go see what he's got for you today and make the best of it. But in the process, or even before you start, start that list. Maybe before you leave today or before you go to that next step you've got going on, you're going to write down at least one or two things that you're thankful for. It's going to rock your world. Keep a list and go back in about six months and read what you wrote today. A special thank you to our sponsors who finance our ministry, Life in the Carolinas at lifeinthecarolinas.com. Editor Beth, and you can find Miss Beth at editorbeth.com, and uh, HD Imports at 803-985-0985 for the folks that are in York County. If you'd be so kind as to support our ministry, you can make a donation at letstalkdementia.org. We could certainly use it as we go about offering free services to people just like you. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, what are we talking about? Favorite foods. I can talk about that. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye, y'all.